Yeah, it better. is Tuesday night. It is eight o'clock. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at here with you. And as Matt said, it's time to start. So we're starting to DJ round table here. And uh, always have some great DJs on here as well. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Yeah. Greatly appreciate. There's some other great DJs here, including Ollie from Australia, DJ Dynablen. He has made a special appearance tonight. He comes in every so often when he gets a chance to hit with his uh, regular job and with the time differences between everything. Uh, unfortunately, Kurt and I were uh, going back and forth. I uh, had to figure out real quickly what the, the time difference is. And he lives 15 hours in the future from me. All right. You should be good. So he needs to send me the lottery numbers for the Illinois State Lottery, and I'll share them with him. So, uh, Kurt, if you can send those numbers to me right now, it'd be great. That doesn't work that way, though, folks. <laughs> After I buy a few tickets. <laughs> Yeah, well, again, uh, American dollars are worth more than Australia. So, like fifty million U.S. dollars would be uh, some good money down there in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is, you got to pay tax on your uh, winning winnings, whereas we don't. You know, I've always wanted to go to Australia. Go to the Australia Zoo. There's a lot of oh, beautiful yeah. stuff down in Australia. One of my friends went to Australia, and all they brought me back was Vegemite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's. That's not a good present. No, it wasn't nice. I don't want to go to Australia because of the tarantulas and spiders. <laughs> well, again, Australia, usually Australia, uh, everyone I've ever ran to who's from Australia, usually are really cool people. Oh, yeah. Some cool takes on things. And, of course, one of the things I found out from another Australian, a fellow Aussie to uh, DJ Dabla, and they're a DJ, um, is... Uh, Nutbush City is the big dance song down there. It's kind of like their version of uh, Cha Cha's like Cupid Shuffle and uh, Wobble all tied into one. Uh, it's their thing. You do Wobble or Cha Cha Slide or Cupid Shuffle or anything as such down there, they'd look at you and clear the dance floor. First, you put yeah. Nutbush City on there from uh, Tina Turner. It's it's their Cotton Eye Joe. You know, it's it's their thing. So. Another weird one is the um, Eagle Rock from Daddy Cool. So the men like to take their pants off for some. Yeah, you know one. Of, yeah, and dance. You know, yeah, you know one of my favorite. <laughs> you know one of my favorite Christian bands is from Australia, the Newsboys. Oh, Newsboys! Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, they're from Australia. I mean, well, that sounds very. That sounds super close to the. It, I'm not sure if it's all of America, but Wisconsin thing where you play piano man and all the men drop their pants. That's yeah. Wisconsin. That's Wisconsin. Yeah. They don't, we don't do that down here in Illinois. That's that's Wisconsin. I mean, without fail, I my last song of the night, Sunday night, was uh, or Saturday night was Piano Man, and <laughs> one of the girlfriend runs up to me before he does it. Hey, is it cool if we drop trow? <laughs> go ask the groom. In fact, I bet if you take his belt off and just pants him, he'll <laughs> go along with it. <laughs> Spot on. And I had all the men in the circle, pants down, and <laughs> And one woman was actually going up and kind of eyeing packages. <laughs> oh, well, that, that, again, Wisconsin is Wisconsin, and they do some unique things up there. Uh, you know, it's like, it, 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 that's just why the uniqueness of each area in the United States uh, for DJing is always unique. And <laughs> this is uh, for tonight's episode, uh, other than cool thing, having some dinner. Hey, uh, wait, I got to ask, cool thing, where do you get the sub from? Subway. Subway? Okay. Uh, I, I was going to say Subway, Jersey Mike's, or another place. It's Subway. Subway? What is it? What is it? Turkey? No, it's M? just ham. Ham? Yeah. It's, it's, just, uh, it's just ham and lettuce. Did you get, did you get potato know. chips or Doritos? No, I didn't get anything. Just a plain old sandwich. <laughs> just a sandwich? No, no side? No potato chips? No? Do you just get no. like, a pickle out of the refrigerator or something? No, I wasn't oh. with I wasn't with my parents when they got. I was here at home. Ah, so but you do have a Mountain Dew. There you go. He the the guy had the dude has a Mountain Dew. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about something tonight uh, that uh, has happened. Um, I'm sure to all of us is when you talk to a client, and that client has. Um, a family member 
or one of the two clients that is very, very strong in ideas. And what I mean by that, you explain to them things that they should do or shouldn't do, and they're not receiving those ideas. And they want it their way for a uh, a wedding, um, especially like sometimes parents like to uh, get involved uh, or an aunt or a cousin or grandparents or someone who is maybe not their wedding, you know, brother, sister, it could be uh, anyone. And I've run into it and I'm sure you guys have seen it too, that these people, um, want to control the wedding, it's not their wedding, or one of the bride, either bride or groom, wants to control the wedding and run roughshod over the other half of the wedding. So when you see that kind of stuff, when you see a dominant person, whoever that person may be, uh, trying to control the wedding for a couple, uh, what do you try to do? Do you try to talk to them and try to appease them and try to make them happy? Or do you try to say, hey, uh, you know, aunt so-and-so, I, I appreciate your input, but this is, uh, you know, this is uh, DJ Brentley's uh, <laughs> wedding or is DJ Cool Thing's wedding or is DJ Salsa's wedding or, you know, it's Hunter's wedding. It's, it's you know, it's Matt's wedding. <laughs> it's Brentley's wedding. It's uh, whoever's wedding it is, it's their wedding. I appreciate your input, but, I think that, you know, we'll take that into consideration and try to move on. So how do you usually uh, meet someone who is like that, who wants to dominate that wedding and not basically let the couple decide what they want to have at their own wedding? So, Matt, I'm going to start with you out in California. How do you overcome that? How do you overcome, you know, an overbearing aunt, brother, sister, or whomever it is? Um how do you overcome that? I mean, I've never really run into it that much because um, I just don't reply to their emails. Uh, <laughs> it's not your wedding. I don't talk to you. Um, but uh, I mean, the the farthest thing I've had is like maybe a mom will say, oh, we're doing this surprise dance with her and her dad, but she doesn't know. Or we're, you know, I want to sing a song or we're doing this. Like, that's fine. But like, when you try to like add in a bunch of requests, like it's not your wedding. Like you can add some input, sure, but um, like I, it's I don't know. I I rarely get contacted by anybody besides the bride or groom or the coordinator. Um, and usually the bride or groom will preface it by saying, "Oh, my mom wants to talk to you or ask you a question about this activity." So then, yeah, sure, they could contact me, but I don't really have that issue. Um, I mean. I don't know. It's not really my, I don't have a good answer. It really happen to you much. Yeah. It doesn't it's, it's, it's one of the things that when you talk to people and yeah, you know, again, sometimes parents, mother, father, aunt, uncle, someone may be paying for your services, which is fine and great. And they want to be part of a meeting. They want to talk to you. I would see a problem with that personally, but it's like, they can't get in their own way. They're kind of like, I want this, this, and this, and this, but it's not, I understand you may be paying for it. I understand you, it may be, you're the one, you know, in charge and, you know, the, the, their, your son, your daughter, whoever it is, your wife, your future wife, your future husband, your niece, nephew, whoever it is, brother, sister, it's their special day. And I understand you want to add your input, maybe because you've been through a wedding that was bad, had bad DJ there, or you had bad band, or you had bad experience. And I want to make sure we avoid that experience. But you know, when you have someone who's very overbearing like that, it makes it very, to me very difficult sometimes to talk to uh, the couple. So, uh, Kurt, down in Australia, do you run into that with people you know, like you know one member, a family member? Uh, being very overbearing, saying, hey, I'm the one in charge, and, you know, either the couple or one half the couple is the sitting there, like, oh, okay, whatever, and I have any questions or anything to say? I, I did have one, I think it was my very first wedding, that um, the couple had organized their uncle to play the bagpipes for the ceremony, as I was walking in the ceremony. Um, 
but he had taken it upon himself to play the bagpipes as well for the introductions. And it was um, just his decision, I'm just going to play the bagpipes for them to enter into reception. And uh, it wasn't good. <laughs> Um, so there, you know, as, as you know, the cup was waiting hidden out of view and he just started blasting his bagpipes and um, there was nothing I could do. You know, you know how loud bagpipes are. Oh, yeah. Um, so basically he forced them to walk in to him playing the bagpipes for introductions. So, yeah, that that's one thing that's happened to me. But other than that, yeah, I haven't had... Um, many, no, I've been pretty lucky apart from that first wedding. So uncles and aunties, you know, wanting to dictate how the wedding flows basically. And did you find it difficult? How did, how did you overcome that difficulty? In that situation, there was nothing I could do. You know, he was there playing bagpipes. He wasn't meant to be doing it. Um, other than that, I don't tend to have issues with it normally. Um, during the, the client meeting, I usually say, look, if any of your family members comes to me and wants to change things, you know, on the day, it's I'm just going to turn them away, you know, and I, and I let them know. Um, it's your wedding. I'm not going to deal with aunties, uncles, grandmas, grandfathers, you know, before reception starts trying to dictate what's going to happen you know and that's uh that's one thing i've i've run into as well is a family member saying i'm such and such fill in the blank here i want to hear this now for a song or i want this or that and you you're kind of like hey you know what no problem let me verify with the bride now i'm again i'm blessed to have tracy with me so I will tell Tracy and Tracy will go talk to the bride and groom because sometimes aunt so-and-so is uh, maybe she had a little bit to drink and she's like, you know, she wants something that the bride and groom absolutely hate, you know, and you don't want to just do it. Uh, make the bride and groom, uh, my bride and groom mad. Uh, you don't want the couple mad at you. You want to do the things that are right and they feel is correct. So you run into things like I that. Find... You, it's, it's kind of a fine line to walk sometimes. Yeah. I find the problem is normally they'll come to you just before reception starts. And, you know, the bride and groom are out getting photos. You know, they're busy. There's no way you can change anything. You know, you can't call them up and say, oh, look, you know, Aunt Maggie is trying to change whatever. You know, they're not interested. <laughs> so I just turn them away. That Yeah. And that's communication with the couple too, and finding out beforehand, getting information, playlists, and so forth, so on. Now I know a uh, cool thing is enjoying some beautiful Subway subs. He's yeah. enjoying his uh, lovely dinner there. Uh, cool thing. Have you run into a family member? Because I know you do a lot of friends and family, but have you been run into it that a another family member tries to take over that event, birthday party, wedding, you know, whatever the party is. And they come up to you and start asking you to do things that you know the person whose party it's for, or be a couple for a wedding or whatever it is, say, oh, no, no, that's, that's not what I want. You know, they, they don't want to have aunt so-and-so, you know, do this or do that. Or like with, with Dinah Blend, with Kurt, is having someone come in and start playing bagpipes in the middle of your, uh, your wedding. You know, to tell you the truth, I'm kind of like um, DJ Solis, where I barely, you know, experienced that. Because uh, I think uh, when it comes to the set list, I'm always sent it by the bride or the groom. And, and I never really experienced that. Because I think down here, I think the bride and the groom mostly take charge of their wedding and plan it in advance. Okay. I'm, I remember doing a uh, a wedding for my cousin. This was my last ever wedding, where I was told not to play any requests because she she trusts me with the music selection and whatever music I played. That's the music they danced to. And other than that, I don't really 
kind of experienced that. Okay. All right. DJ Bradley, what about you up there in Wisconsin? I'm sure you've run into an overbearing, you know, be it brother, sister, aunt, uncle, parent, whatever it is that tries to make that event their own versus it's the, you know, person who is their event, be it a couple for a wedding or be it someone for a birthday party or whatever. Well, how do you usually handle that and what usually happens? Not to be callous, I'm kind of rude about it, to be brutally honest. Uh, and I will let couples know unless it's in what you've given me, I'm not doing any birthday shout outs, anniversary shout outs or any of that. Unless you explicitly tell me these are the announcements we want you to make. And in our forms for planning, there is a note section under every page of it. So you can tell me any additionals. Uh, when dad came up to me and said, you have to play White Wedding, I'm paying for this, beep. And I'm like, no, I don't. Uh, it's their day. And it's not on my things I'm going to, I am allowed to do here. And that's one of the songs I will never play at a wedding. I will play Get Low, but I'm not playing White Wedding. Uh, call it the Wisconsin double standard, so to speak, that, and you have to learn the fine line of what's acceptable and it's based on your market, you know, like how white wedding really isn't too prudent at a, you know, a wedding, but playing get low is. So there's those lines of, you know, what music is appropriate and what is it based on content and, you know, lyrics and all of that. But then I've had, you know, moms telling me, well, she said we could do this. I'm like, I don't have it here not happening and yeah i've gotten a little heat from it and when the and in the end of the night the couples were like thank you to adhering to what we wanted and then you'll have those people who will be like well i'm just gonna go ask the bride or groom and that and the first thing i will actually tell folks is hey it's their day will your request or what you want make their day any better or add to it in a, a you know in a complimentary manner and at that point when you put it out to them logically 95 percent of the people be like oh wow you're right okay you're right and then there's that five percent that just don't care and i've watched a few family members walk out of receptions because the bride said no there was one wedding i did last september and because they come to see me at Animal House on a regular basis here in town, and that's why they booked me and they paid for my premium package, added sparks, added clouds, and I mean, they did everything they like, top to bottom, the best they could buy for the whole day, and rented out the venue until 2 a.m. that night instead of midnight so their friends wouldn't go out downtown, try to get in their cars after leaving the reception drunk, and leave. They would just stay there, and, and they were spot on, 150 people there at the end of the night at 2.15. So, but their family member, you know, came to me, she, you, you have to play this country song. No, I don't. It's been played at every one of our family's weddings. I'm sorry. I've been told I am not allowed to play country except for Man, I Feel Like a Woman or Any Man of Mine and Fishing in the Dark. Aside from that, I am not allowed to play. Oh, man. You wouldn't want to come here to South Carolina. Country music is big down here in the South. Well, well big it's up, big we're using that in Wisconsin too, but that's it's that's big up here. Wanted. But because I, de I, I'm literally off of you know a mile from the University of Wisconsin lacrosse campus mm -hmm. and the bars I DJ at in town, they also are within a mile. That's where I will say half of my, you know, just turning 25, 26, getting married weddings come from, and they're they have their like three country songs they want, maybe add drunk and I don't want to go home to that. But aside from that, no one want like there are a lot of brides that don't want it at all, or there's ones that want it a predominantly country wedding. And I turn those down like the play. Nope, sorry, well, I'm can, not. Can you really that. can you really say that that song I'm drunk is really a country song? Now, one person in that song is country, but another singer in there, she's not country. She's more like more alternative rock. So it, it's kind of like one of those mixed songs that can go either way. 
but I would not consider it country. It was definitely in my market and the markets around the cross marketed as a country song to get people on it. Because if you put it on the pop station, they're not going to have as big of a demographic looking at it and listening to it. Did the pop station play it? By all means, they did. It was and it was all over the radio for six months. But there's a lot of you know a lot of my couples either want it or don't. And if you say I want no country, I will stick to that list. And God, there's been a couple times when and again entitlement of guests. Who said you can't? I, I, I'm, I'm not allowed to play country. Comes back five minutes later. Who said you can't play country? They did. You're lying. <laughs> Here's my sheets. No country. And they would go talk to the couple and be like, nope. The lady come back to me. Well, you're still going to play it, right? No. <laughs> what aren't you understanding here? Just because your Aunt Mary, who's, you know, held her since she was a baby, this is what she asked. And so I do and get a lot of that. And sending more and more people to request the exact same song. And it's like, it's not who's requesting it. It's the song. I can't or, play it. And if it's if it's not a song, and if I get people like asking for a song like that that I know I'm allowed to play, but because of content or lyrics I can't, I will do the Nick Spinelli on it. I will find like the the clean twelve seconds of it, boom, 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 and go. There you got it. Sorry, that's all I can play of it, and just get out of it. But well, the nice thing, nice thing with stems, if you know where the bad words are at, you can have your stem oh, yeah. button open and click, click on the stem real quick. And then click out those songs, um, or if you have, some, or if you have something like the, if, if you have something like the DJ answer too, it has a sensor button. Just press that sensor button, yeah. and it will reverse it. And it'll it's so hard that to part. do on the fly, though. It's a, yeah. No, if and <laughs> if I know if I and there's been a night I realized I screwed up and played uh the wrong version of Uptown Funk, and I knew I did it, so I looked on the screen. I'm like, oh, he's about to say oh s word, and I just hit the heart filter on on low pass real hard real fast and then pulled back out of it that was one of the and if you know your material and like i tell all the kids i'm teaching whatever song you're playing know it inside and out where you can get in where you can get out where you can drop it in in the chorus get out at the end of it know every bit and part of your songs so yeah, I, have, I have that song <clears throat> on my lap yeah i have that song too but i have the clean version where it says oh kill him yeah i i because the club thing, I might if I'm not paying attention or I'm really tired from the night before, yeah, I might grab a dirty version of the wedding and have to edit it on the fly myself. Ah, All my dirty that. versions, I, I color code red, but sometimes you miss it, you know, like But you uh you, you're Martin. Serato, right? Uh right, Kirk? Yeah. Okay. So and then Brad, DJ Brentley, he uh he uses uh record box, so which now, you know, don't know, they haven't seen anything, any news or anything like that, but because they're both the same company, you know, technically, maybe, you know, they'll start bleeding over each other's, you know, kind of use of stuff, you know, as far as uh, how everything works. Yeah, I mean, well, I've I, got my Rev 5 on back order. I, I want to check the Rev 5 out. I really want to check it out now. Did you get your uh, your controller fixed yet? I got it back. It lasted for three songs. Crossfader broke again, and it's now back at Deltronics in Woodridge, Illinois, oh. waiting for a Crossfader. By me, are you a Crossfader guy or you're an Upfader guy? I'm a Crossfader. Oh. Wow. I'm a Crossfader. I I, I crossfader. couldn't do it. I've, I've, I've never used, I've never used a Crossfader. I've never used a Crossfader. I always use a Crossfader. Here, yeah, here. This will this will be a great you know way to show it. Buddy and I grew up in a different era of DJ. When the crossfader was the main mechanism for going back and forth, I hate riding the faders up and down because oh, I love it. I hate. I'm not as. I don't think I'm as clean. So much volume that you lose dB on your crossfader. I've got my you set up. Yeah, on my on my bigger record box deck. Depending what song I'm playing, if I'm scratching or not, the crossfader adjustment is right on the front of the deck, so I can, if I'm scratching, I can jack it up. If I need a little bit of a smoother transition, I'll back it down a little. So it gives you options. And I, like I keep saying, I wish Record Box would make the new answer to the RZ. I would be very happy. Actually, I love, I, I love the crossfader cool. because Something. it's so easy to blend. Because you, you can you can move your thumb. You're just moving your thumb over to, cro to blend over a song. 
And it just makes it so much easier to slowly move your thumb across a song and get it back all the way over to the left or even over over to the right. And just use your thumb. Just You're just sliding your thumb right across when you try and bleed and get that perfect pitch right across. You know, it's it, actually... It's, it, there's just so much fun. Again, it goes back to using vinyl. I started on yeah. vinyl. That's that's what you use. You know, people didn't it's write topic, volume levels. Um, what's your style? What's your, you know, what's your style? What's mine? What I'm an instant doubler and I don't crossfade. You know, whereas... I don't understand the point of instant doubles at all. Like you you're supposed like to be it. able to mix on either deck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 that's I'm, probably why i made too I'm, many I'm, mistakes yeah, in the past and now i'm going instant doubling from now on I, I somebody told me what it was and i was like what, what's the point of this they're like oh so you're like more comfortable on one side and i'm like well i don't really yeah. scratch so yeah the up air is perfect for me for when i play all you know the whole song and when the song's about to fade out i just turn down the up faders and i go the other like, way for me as as soon as as soon as i mixed out of one song i've got another like ready to go that in my mind that like i load up instantly then i go to controlling lighting have all the timing in my head to where i know i'm gonna drop it and then just do it but i i've i've never been a crossfader person because every time i use the crossfader i always forget it's on one side yeah. and then uh song starts and there's nothing there so but mine mine has a cool feature where you can apply a high pass filter or low pass to the crossfader so when you crossfade over it'll actually like add in the filter yeah. out uh, so, it also has a gamer effect too. You you can see this is this is what I use here on Twitch. I, I have it plugged in the USB on the bottom. I'm pulling harder, but you can see the crossfader is over because that's the last position it's in for the last song. Always I always use a crossfader because it's just the way it, it's the way you're supposed to. It's it's the way you're supposed to DJ because that's the way you do it vinyl. <laughs> that's but, how that's how I learned on vinyl. And when you scratch because you have to use the crossfader to. You know, chirp in and out a little. But that I've got gotten got it on so cross fade, fader mode. You can't, you can't do chirps. You on record box because you have different settings in the app. You can actually get it pretty damn close. And when I throw my turntables on, it's you can definitely. It's easy to do. Yeah, it's, it's all. Uh, there's, there's always differences between how everything's done. It's more one way to skin a cat. Doesn't mean one way is right or one way is wrong. It's just that oh. you know you get used to certain things. And when I when I see guys who who uh, use you know run the uh, the volume levels, it's like you know I w I don't do that, but you know I do the crossfader. And uh, again, I can uh, I can go over and go see your. Uh, your controller there and take some pictures at seven to you if you want me to uh next uh this week you I'll go down there and uh <laughs> so what what's your style wrong. Jeff DJ Jeff what's your style how do you how do you mix it what uh I'm a crossfader as well um you know I Room grew up split. um yeah I mean you know I, I grew up I did not use vinyl um I had two cassette decks was my first DJ setup so you know, had a um, no. mixtapes and uh, and I would mix between just a cheap little Radio Shack mixer and two cassette decks. And, uh, you know, I that remember was what I learned that. on. And uh, <laughs> I no, I, I'm, a, I'm a crossfader guy, though. I do use, you know, my my faders as well on occasion. But for me, um, the crossfader is my go to because uh, I'm queuing up the next song. You know, I'm hitting uh, the queue. And and if I'm um, you know moving stuff around, I just want to quick get it off that channel, and uh, so that's that's the crossfader for me. And uh, if I'm queuing up a song or moving around, I I don't want to have to deal. And I guess it's what you what you're most comfortable with. But for me, whenever I drop a a cross or a, when I drop a fader down, it's the first thing I forget to bring back up. <laughs> it's just I, what you're used to yeah and, and the thing i'm sure brantley and again jeff you probably do the same thing when you bring a song over and you use a crossfader your sliders your volume slider you're adjusting volume to make sure the volume's equal so you kind of mm -hmm. you had a little bit of a dip so you want to be a little bit low when you come in and you get back up to at least equal if not a little bit higher you adjust your volume you're yeah. totally fine tuning but it's not all the way down all the way up all the way down all the way up on each yeah. song you're well, um, well, for me, I use my gain controls. If I have a, a song, the MP3 is a lower level, I need to jack it up a little bit. Or if something is really 
um, red zoning, I'll, I'll bring it down on the gain control up at the top. Uh, and I use those and, but I usually have everything set where everything's at, those are usually at 12 o'clock and my, my uh, faders are up at 100% and I use my crossfader. And then if I need to bring something up or down, I don't touch my, my, uh, uh, my faders. Uh, I will use the gain control at the top because that's the closest to where, uh, at least on the DJ, uh, DDJ 1000, that's where the, um, the view, view meters are up there. So I can see if I'm pegging and, you know, or if it needs to bring, come up a little bit. So that's just that's what see, I'm I, used to. I never, I never run my faders um, hot. They're never 100%. They're always down. Really? The highest I go up to is like maybe five or six. And I keep mine all the way up. Yeah, no, mine all the way up. I, I never run them hot all the way up because, because you know, the gain and the gain is at 12 noon on all the, each channel. My main is up a little higher. And my speakers are, I run my speakers hotter, let the speakers do the work. But that way I also have headroom too. And that's one of the things that, you know, I learned a long time ago. That's another way of doing it is that I, I see guys 100% across. You got to go up and buy me, you're, you're adjusting the gain. Sometimes gain can add distortion. I ride, so you I keep ride your, the gain all night. I'm adjusting the gains. But my yeah. fade is 100%. Because Mine or not. I'm too scared to accidentally knock one and then there's no coming back. Yeah, uh, and the volume goes. Yeah, that, that's yeah. the worst feeling yeah. to fade to a song and there's nothing there <laughs> because I, you're uh, because your uh, fader the is down at uh, two. All night long, I'm adjusting. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the gains. I, the gains. I, yeah. I I really very very rarely touch. It's always in the sl the fader itself. The fader I adjust. Mm -hmm. So again, I like I, I like dinner and cocktail. I'm down at like two. You know two, two and a half, depending on what speakers, either J8s or uh, uh, Maui 5s, depending on the size of the room and stuff like that. And then, you know, dance floor five, maybe six on it, on the, uh, on the uh, J8s and the Maui's probably four to five because they don't have as much power as, because I, again, I have the speakers up higher. They're a little higher than zero DB. So they're the ones driving the sound and give good clean sound versus having the, the controller do it. And you're also not taxing the uh, video, the sound card in the controller too. That's the way I do it. Again, everyone does things differently. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong. There Again, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And Jeff, I'm glad you came in. <laughs> uh, I know you had some soccer. We were uh, the cross town for a, a soccer game. So do they win? Nope. We lost. Oh, I'm sorry <laughs> to hear that. Yeah, we won. Uh, we won last night, but we lost tonight. So ah, that, that's that, that's soccer. And your Panthers Football. lost last night too. Oh yeah, I, I gave up on those guys <laughs> since the, whenever they drafted uh, Bryce. I'm like, yeah, that's going to be a couple years of uh, yeah. of work there. So it is what it is. And my bear, my beloved Bears are zero and two. So for NFL season. <laughs> <laughs> and Kurt's like, what we talk about bears and panthers, what football, American football. So <laughs> I, I, it was I haven't it. figured out what my uh local team is for the NFL. I think it's the Panthers, I think. I'm not sure. It's yeah, you would be Carolina Panthers. Panthers. They're the Carolina Panthers, you know. Yeah. Yeah, or Atlanta, the Falcons. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on where you're Falcons, closer to. Falcons. Falcons did some actually did halfway decent. You know, I, I'm surprised the team I'm surprised about. Is the Detroit Lions this year? That's that's a team I'm kind of a little bit surprised. And Mike, uh, Mike, DJ Mikey, Mike of Pennsylvania, he's yelling Jets. He's got Brett Favre, not Brett Favre. He's got uh, <laughs> I got Brett Favre. He had Aaron Brett Rogers, Favre for a while. He's, done. he's got Aaron Rodgers, and Rodgers might be back for the playoffs if the Jets go into the playoffs. So really, yeah, he he he, uh, he tore his Achilles heel. They, he they should surgery. just cut him. They should just cut him. Cut him and save the money. Oh, you know, um, you know, South Carolina is the home of the Clemson Tigers and the South Carolina Gamecocks for college football. Nobody cares about college football. I care about college football. College football is cool. Those guys play for heart. They're not playing for money. Maybe I'm I'm biased because my school didn't have like a really <laughs> good football team. We weren't even Division One. So and well, Conway, you know what? Yeah, Conway is the home of the Chanticleers. They've been doing really good. There you go. I, I will say it is wonderful to DJ at a couple of the downtown Madison clubs when the Badgers win or in town. Oh, it's awesome. But that's about as far as my college, you know, sports desire wants to go is 
if I'm going to get some more gigs down that way, just win Badgers. So uh, Mikey Mike saying his cousin played for the Carolina Panthers. Ooh. Is a, uh, hey, Mike, wh what's your cousin's name? And uh, when can we get some? Uh, when can we get some autograph balls for cool thing and for Jeff? They ask your cousin <laughs> for that. <laughs> um, since uh, you came in, Jeff, I know you came in late uh, to the uh, talk and chat, and we started talking about crossfaders. Uh, Bucky Greenlee was uh, Greenlee. He played for uh, Carolina. So Bucky, do not Buckley, know the name. Bucky Greenlee. Um, so we we're talking about earlier, uh, about an overbearing family member, uh, for a wedding or an event, you know, you have mom getting in the way or dad getting in the way or aunt or uncle or someone who is overbearing the process, uh, at, you're at the wedding or even during the sales process when you're talking to, uh, a couple and the couple is not responding or saying anything. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, the the parent or aunt or uncle or whoever it is that is not the couple keeps on answering and telling you what they want. You're not hearing what the couple wants. How do you how do you handle that? And I, I know DJ Brantley and uh, he's had the same thing. I have had people demanding, you know, play this song. I'm the I'm the fill in the blank here of the bride or groom or whoever, and I paid for this or I'm the one in charge or. You need to do this because I want this. And it's especially something that the, the the couple don't want. You know, like he had a one that had a country, uh, they wanted country music. And they're like, no, it's only one of like three songs I could play. It's country. Other than that, they don't want any country. So how do you handle that overbearing person that's, you know, kind of can't get out of their own way to save the couple's uh, wedding? Well, you know, there, there's a couple ways to handle it. I prefer to, uh, you know, go through the bride and groom uh, if it's a um, if it's a wedding. Uh, if they're okay with it, then I will play it, um, and I'll let them know that you know it's a clean version. I think we've discussed this in the past. Like if, if somebody comes up to me and says, uh, "Hey, play this off my phone," I usually say no unless it's the bride or groom uh, um, because I don't know what what they're requesting or putting on there. Um, but here's another question for the group. Uh, I just ran into this one uh, yesterday. Got a bride that's uh, that I asked, you know, fill out the form here and um, you know, show me all your choices for uh, for all your um, all your songs. And she's got some weird stuff. And uh, you know, how do you handle that? You know, she's got like for the um, for the garter toss, twist and shout by the Beatles. You know, like, you know, that's kind of an odd song for Garter. I, you know, uh, got some other suggestions, but if that's what you want to go with, you're paying the bill. Uh, I will play it. Just, you know, so I, I, my question there, everybody, is, you know, what do you do in a situation like that? Well, who wants to go first on that one? I'm going to say, hey, Matt, why don't you try that one first? Um, unique songs that may not fit for the occasion. How do you uh, how do you overcome that? How do you explain to a, a person to the bride or groom or to the other person that comes up? Well, this this situation would would be the bride, and she wants songs that don't fit. Yeah, I don't think she knows. Uh, oh she yeah, really yeah. doesn't have a clue. But but I mean, if that's what she wants, do I, you play it? I I run into it a lot. I kind of did this weekend where um, you know bride and groom had a very specific kind of style not style but like and then a specific order of the music that they wanted you know they wanted like EDM to pump everybody up at the start and then Arabic music and then some Spanish and this and that and like halfway through the night like we were losing people and the dance floor wasn't as lit so the bride comes up to me she's like Matt she has an accent so I don't that's I don't know why I was trying to imitate it but she was like she was like she's very heavily Venezuelan so she's like Matt just change the music like I don't care about our playlist just make the people dance and I was like easy and then we had a blast after that so it's like sometimes they just need to see it and realize it and understand that like what they like might not work with their guests and so after that like rager for the rest of the night no issues so uh and they were very happy they wrote a five-star review all that stuff but it's like sometimes mm -hmm. you know i don't i don't want to be that confrontational person to step in and be like hey your music kind of sucks it's not gonna fit well so but i've, mm -hmm. I've had to do that once where i was like you know, somebody sent me a hundred songs for what they wanted for their reception playlist and 
half of them were slow and i'm like you know i i like your music selections but some of these slow ones is it okay if we play those during dinner you guys will be there to enjoy it you'll still hear it and they were fine with it so i think sometimes you just need to like nicely edge them that educate them that you're the you're the dj you're the expert here um but i mean for the most part like the one i did on sunday they had three or four german songs and he was like yeah just fit them in whenever you can just make sure i'm on the dance floor the groom he's like because i'm the german one and uh, he's like i'll get everybody to dance uh even though it'll be awkward otherwise so you know you gotta you gotta kind of work with them and let them know you're the expert and, and no, I, you know, I actually, it, it, yeah yeah i actually experienced something similar to that at my cousin cheyenne's wedding where it was during dinner and i was playing a lot of the slower songs because it was i wasn't ready to open the dance floor and they, and they came up to me and said you need to play something better and i was like it's dinner time we don't we're not open the dance floor yeah, like, so we like, first dance. this weekend on saturday they they had a dinner playlist and it was some really weird dinner music and like 20 minutes in some lady came up from a table yeah can you change the music everybody's complaining this is very like non-dinner music i'm like i'd be happy to the bride and groom suggested this playlist this is theirs but i agree with you it's it's not really dinner music and so i changed it nobody cared after that and it was this just is, like sometimes this is, this is why you know i'm not a fan for spotify playlist because one of the things i always explain to people uh especially talking to couples that a song driving down the street with your friends in the car, screaming on top of your lungs, doesn't always translate to something good on the dance floor or at the wedding. It may not translate to everyone there. You want a little more general songs. And then, again, looking at a playlist, uh, DJ Mikey Mike said uh, that he gives 10 songs. I use uh, Fibo, and on the app, we have must-plays. 10 songs that are must play. And you know, we say, you know, give us five each. We'll decide where to put them. We tell them, we'll decide. Is it better a cocktail and, and dinner time? Is it better for the dance floor? Does will translate to the dance floor? And when we see stuff that is not good for the dance floor, or a song not really fitting something, kind of like you're running into with twist and shout, we tell them, you know, it ultimately again, it's their decision. It's up to them what they want. But they want our professional opinion. I would rather see that song and a dance for people to dance to and do something else that's more for garter or bouquet toss. You know, you can do like, you know, if you want something kind of like that, a kind of old throwback, you know, you got another you know, one bites of dust from Queen. You got other songs you can pick yeah. that you can go to it would fit the mood a little more. And people can still have fun with it unless you're yeah. doing something, a theme of some kind. That's the other thing is asking questions of the couple. Are they doing some kind of thing? Just some kind of feel they want? Is it a, you know, is, is there something that they're trying to go for, a feel to try and go for? <laughs> but it's it's a hard thing. It's a very hard thing because you're the professional. You do weddings, you know, like me, I do a wedding almost every weekend. And they're going to do a wedding once in their lifetime, maybe two, if they, you know, they, something happened before. But most of the people are going to do it once in their lifetime. They don't do this all the time. They think stuff works, mm. but doesn't. And the other thing you can equate to, it's kind of like cooking. If the first time you're making a cake, you're not following certain directions. The cake's not going to come out. You're the baker. You're asking what flavors they want. Uh, will those flavors go together? Would the cake come out right? You want the cake to come out fluffy, moist, and tasteful? Or do you want the, cup, the cake to come out, but it's going to be yeah, kind of goopy runny and not done well because the ingredients you're given are not good so it's the kind of thing you it depends how you equate it to people uh kurt how do you how do you handle that um usually during the client meeting i sort of recommend stuff that does work and doesn't work um as you said if you get a young, like if you get a young couple, they, they normally haven't been to too many weddings, so they really don't have any idea what to expect. Um, this wedding I've got on Saturday, she's just emailed me the timeline and it's all, you know, starts at six. I want every formality over and done with by 7.30 and I've just looked at it and, I'm, you know, it's not realistic, but I did, I did, to explain to her in the in the meeting, you know, that you want to spread things out a bit. You don't want all your formalities right at the start. 
and then three hours of nothing. But anyway, she's um, decided to go with, with how she wants to do it and all the formalities over and done with as quickly as possible. Um, yeah. So when you get that and you, you know, you, you explain to them and they still push you to play those songs, do you say, okay, fine, great, you know, but you may get the reaction you want or what, how do you explain it to them to make them uh, so, hopefully yeah, change their mind? The topic a little bit there. When they, if they do request some weird songs, like they'll send me a few songs. If I'm not going to guarantee I'm going to play all their songs, you know, and I normally don't. Like if I have 20 songs they've given to me i'll i might play six six or seven and normally they don't have an issue like yeah i'll never guarantee i play every one of their you know requests because you've got to fit them in you know as you as you all know so dj brantley what about you what do you what would you say to this couple to help out uh, jeff here with uh someone asking See? for songs that may not fit See. I learned, and this we, this wedding I had over the weekend, uh, Friday in the Wisconsin Dells, I was nervous because the groom had requested, like gave me a, his playlist is called Gucci Island. It's his everyday playlist. They gave me five must, must plays and basically said, follow the format of Gucci Island, their playlist. And it was all EDM. Make no mistakes, it was, there were maybe 15 top 40 and pop songs in there. And on their must playlist were the rock songs for her dad. But it was their gig log I just posted on YouTube today. Um, almost near the end, it was EDM and dubstep in and out the rest of the night. And I learned something a few years back that made me feel a little bit nervous about taking this EDM on, you know, like playlist. What I'll play, I don't care how many songs you give me on the must play. I tell couples to keep it at least under 20. And then if you have a Spotify playlist, attach it. Let me see it. Because in addition to scoping out my couples on Facebook, if you're giving me your Spotify playlist, I'm looking at your real Spotify account. I want to see what makes you tick. So by doing that, you're giving me a lot of fuel and a lot of, you know, as we as bangers in your library that may not be bangers elsewhere. And it all goes back to this one wedding I did in uh, 2020 when we reopened. Barry Manilow Sunrise was on their playlist, along with a bunch of really other odd, uh, like uh, Emotion from the Beach Gees, which it's a great song, but why are you playing that at a wedding? And I'm like, this playlist is not going to fly. And they also requested a lot of polka. And I looked at everybody and I'm like, oh my God, what have I signed up for? And so I played Barry Manilow Sunrise and my entire dance floor fills up unlike during Cupid Shuffle, Shania Twain, or any of the typical bangers. Uh, legitimately, Sunrise and... Uh, the Bee Gees uh, emotion song were my top hits of the night. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And so I had to sit and really reflect on this and look back at other weddings. I turned my nose up at playlists and be like, well, maybe if you have a little bit more, if they're giving you all these songs that you think are duds, uh, what's the saying? Birds of a feather flock together. If the bride and groom will generally listen to this stuff, it's a pretty surefire bet that their close knit friends that are part of the wedding party and their party animal friends there for the reception are going to listen to that. Don't be scared to play whatever they give you ever. And if it kills the floor or you think it's going to kill the floor, do what you do when you break a new song in at a club, drop a couple of real hardcore bangers, ones that you know will keep the dance floor packed no matter what you do. And then drop that dud, your dud on. And if it's a dud dud, any good DJ can quick mix out of it and put on another banger to revive their floor. Or if it's a dud dud, like one of the songs I had for my Sunday wedding were, play the dud dud out and then play a slow song to regroup your floor. 
Mm. And then once you're back, once you have everybody back on the floor, go back into your show. But I don't look up my turn my nose up at anybody's must play because what we think is awful could be that banger that everyone else likes. And me being in clubs, wait, it's a banger that could fit in my college club sets. Why haven't I been playing this? So I'm more than game to play anything you throw at me. Even if it's only once and it's awful, hey, I gave it a shot and I did what they wanted and made them happy. What about you, uh, Hunter? What, what, what would you say, any suggestions you'd give Jeff for someone saying songs that may or may not fit in an area? I don't know. <laughs> Tell him to piss off. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be mean to them. I'm going to be supportive and I'm going to be nice as possible. You do the, yeah, you do the, oh yeah, some I'll try of them to get to really that. really test you, man. Trust me. Especially a pub, a pub and bar gigs. Yeah. yeah. I would just tell them, yeah, I'll, I'll try to get to that. And with the, uh, when I did weddings a couple of years ago, two, three years ago, I just dealt with whatever was on the playlist. Whatever's on their set list is what I played. So I didn't really see anything unusual in those set lists. Yeah, so this um, this couple is they're heavy into Jelly Roll, so that ought to make an interesting uh, interesting wedding. <laughs> you know what? It, and I will because I host karaoke. Don't be scared of his songs. Oh, they may not yeah. be dance songs, but I've there was one wedding I did last summer. Where they're, they're your sleeper sing along songs, kind of like Summer of 69. Uh, I wouldn't say they're on the same echelon or level as Piano Man, but if you have the right kind of country folks in your wedding, they will all lock arms and start screaming. Uh, was it Save Me was the one a couple of years back, or Son of a, Pre uh, Son of a Sinner is the one from the last summer. Those are. I hate, I mean, not to be, you know, sound, you know, crazy or anything, but those are straight up country bangers. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, they're requesting a lot of jelly roll and, and similar. So it's going to be a very, well, it's out in the country. It's in a, uh, um, this is one of the barn weddings I'm doing this fall, but, um, yeah, that's, um, it's going to be straight up country and, so, uh, yeah. It's, it's, no, it's I, I'm excited to. Yeah, uh, I don't play a lot of country, you know, especially at school school dances. Um, but uh, this is one of the weddings where it's going to be a heavy country, so it'll be interesting. I've done a lot of country weddings before, so make sure you try to put in some Jason Eldine, Luke Bryan, Blake Shelton, people like that. Jackson. The more modern country, Zach Bryan. I, like that the was, oh, uh, I will say. Because and it's even popular in the college clubs, uh, fast car, uh, till you can't from Cody Johnson, uh, in oh, some Darius Rucker, Darius Rucker, and if you're allowed to or if you have the clean version of it, Tyler Childers, Feathered Indians, it's a definite slow song banger. There's there's no two weddings the same. So a couple things I want to go back over here very quickly. Uh, Mikey Mike, who's been putting stuff here. Aaron, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Aaron, DJ12, uh, he is here. Ollie from uh, Canada, uh, he is watching. Uh, good to have you here, sir. Uh, Mikey Mike said, I have a wedding coming up. The bride and groom uh, threw the groom's sister out of the bridal party, but the mother still wants her introduced. And then he said, whoever signs the contract, that's the only one he listened to. If the mom and dad signed a contract, but it's bride and groom or, you know, the son-in-law or son or daughter or daughter-in-law to that mother and father, do you listen to mom and dad the, more than the kids or what? That, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a hard one right there. Um, yeah, because I've, I've had people where they the mom or dad signs a contract. I don't ever talk to the kids. And then it's like, okay, I need to send my planning email. Can you give me the bride's email address? contact info like i need to talk to them well again that, that is a parent that's maybe not getting out of the way of their own they you know they want to control everything let the child do the work it's their special day 
So it, it's 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 a hard one. It's it's a hard one to to go through. Um, and uh, well, let's see, yeah, here. Uh, let's see here. I tell each bride and groom there. Uh, oh, is that array? And then of course he said, uh, Joe Co Joe Cocker, you can leave your hat on. Uh, excellent. As well as Jeff said, yes, that's a great song. Uh, that is also an awesome song for uh, for Garter Toss. And, you know, it's one of the things that we want to make sure you get the best for our clients and work in the best way possible. Uh, and again, sometimes people just don't get out of the way and they, they're they trying good intentions. It's just that they just, I don't know, um, they understand that, hey, you know, be supportive and be helpful, but don't hinder. I guess that's the biggest thing that, you know, some people need to do. So a couple of things real quickly. Um, you guys are watching out there. Make sure you go to their channels. All these guys' channels have video, YouTube. Uh, their links are down below if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, later on, this is recorded. And, 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 uh, and make sure you all check out this Saturday for another DJ Cool Thing gig log. Yep, he's got a gig log. He's got a party. He was showing little pictures before in the, the quiet uh, part before we do in the green room. Uh, <laughs> and he was Excellent. showing uh, his venue, which was really, really cool looking. And in also yeah, in, in Edgeburg, it's close to Augusta, Georgia. There you go. And he is going to rock that party out there like they all Woo! do. So make sure you follow yeah. them all on YouTube. Make sure also you like, subscribe, follow the channel. Uh, and we are live here every Tuesday, uh, and again, Tuesday for us here in the U.S., it's Wednesday afternoon for Kurt down there in Australia. <laughs> He's 15 hours ahead. I said that earlier, and I, I know that for a fact now. Um, make sure that you uh, subscribe, make sure you follow, and make sure you like everything, and make sure you go through all their YouTube channels. They have great gig logs. They always have great stuff on there. Uh, make sure you check it out because you never know what hidden gems you find, including, again, you heard it here earlier, some of us use the crossfader, some of us use the actual vine faders. So I do. Some I are use 100%, some are less. So If I'm not you, doing lighting, I'll use the crossfader and get a little more creative with my mixing. But I, I try to balance great lighting and great mixing, and I can't do both at the same time. Well, I could do both pretty well at the same time, but I can't excel at one and let the other fail. So if I... what I, Speaking uh, of lighting, one other thing... lighting I, is the best on YouTube, guaranteed. I've watched you. all the gig logs. Awesome. I did contact the company who makes the AI unit uh, uh, that's on Facebook I talked about last episode. And I contacted them and I asked them to come on to the show. So they said they're going to figure out a schedule a Tuesday to come on here and we'll have a rep from there. And that way you guys ask questions about nice. this AI software and about this AI unit. Um, and again, let them let, let them explain. Again, it, it, it could be helpful. It could be a nothing. But let them explain their product. Let them explain what they're doing because it's some cool technology. And someone who is may not be as uh, into DMXing as much as like Matt is, Let's say it's Hunter. Hunter wants to get one of those units and he wants to plug a couple lights in. It may do great for him because it's a step up of what he's doing, just doing sound active. So it may not be a level of Matt or it could be kind of right below Matt. I don't know. But let's talk anyway. to them, find out, and see where we go from there. Other than that, guys, I hope you guys enjoy can yourself, I, enjoy the week, and really, make sure really quickly, that... Can I just shout out the, the DJ Billy C's 192 podcast? Yeah, oh, yeah. Because I listen, I've been listening to that lately, and really awesome. They had he had uh, DJ Rachel, he had uh, Matt, uh, Jack Christian. Yeah, really good. I was, he was really good. I was impressed. That's it. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. No, no. <laughs> DJ, DJ Billy, out. he's a friend of the show. He's been on the show. We've talked about his podcast before. Uh, the 192 podcast is a great podcast. Uh, I'm on it. There's a, there's a lot of great people on there. And again, if you get a chance, you can find anywhere you find a podcast, you can actually listen to his podcast and uh, listen to a lot of great interviews there. He's a great guy. And he's been on the show. With his schedule, unfortunately, it's like everyone else. No one gets paid for doing this. We're here just to kind of talk and chat and have fun. So 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed yourself this week. Again, remember, we'll be back here next week. Same time, same channel here on Twitch, or you're watching this on YouTube. We'll have another video. See you guys later. Have a good night. Peace out.